some time ago in the office. I don't know what happened. They now brought people from the ministry, from the Civil Service Commission, they brought them to our office, and they asked all of us to go and bring our certificates from school living certificate, from WAYEC, from uh, what they call it, degree certificate, and everything and all day. I, I was wondering what was going on. And the man would just come early in the <laughs> man would just come early in the morning, insult everybody first and put you on the edge before the interview we, we start. <laughs> he would insult. <laughs> that was how we joined the line. We were already we were senior, very senior staff. We joined the line, everybody joined like a refugee, and we carried our 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 materials. Then one of our manager just got to the man's table. The man, so he su submitted what was supposed to be a certificate for his first degree. The man shouted, thief! <laughs> that is where I finished! This is not how I want it! <laughs> None of us could look up. All, all of us look like <laughs> Man insulted. The man insulted. The man insulted. How did you get this job? You are doing somebody's job. Uh -huh. Even we that have original words, we became, <laughs> we became afraid of ourselves. He said, "Stand here, stand here, stand here." That man. Nobody looks at that man. That day he was he was like this. That's how you. <laughs> that's how you are not bold. Where you where you still where you don't walk in holiness. You are not bold. He stood there. We're coming. We're on the line. We're on the line. The man looked at. I don't know whether he had goggles that could tell. The one that was original. He said, okay, this is original. Oh, you are a PhD holder. Oh, doctor. Well done. Well done. Well done. Here we go. The next one. Hey! <laughs> that day. That day we... <laughs> So my direct manager that was very, very intelligent. My direct manager came. He said, your certificate is original, but are you saying that you graduated from secondary school at the age of seven? This is what it is. <laughs> you left secondary school at the age of seven. Is your father the grand the headmaster? He said, stand here, stand here. <laughs> and I was the one after him. <laughs> he looked at it, then he, he did like this. He said, okay. All right. He did. That was the day I saw how you have no confidence when you are you have a blame. When I read through First and Second Thessalonians, I see it as one book because it is the same subject, and so we are going to go through it um, quite quickly. There are three definitions of what it means to live a sanctified life in these two books. The first one is the one we will start discussing tonight. And the introduction to the first one is in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. The definition of a sanctified life. The definition of the sanctified life. Ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblamedly we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Can you see that kind of lifestyle? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. 
this aspect of sanctification has to do, this aspect of the description of the sanctified life has to do with conduct. So we need to know that as we study, you, you get to find out, okay? You get to find out that this sanctified life, the way Paul revealed it in First and Second Thessalonians, there is sanctification of the body, there is sanctification of the heart, there is also sanctification of the spirit. These are the three compartments in which he broke sanctification. Under this broad heading of a sanctified conduct. Are you following what I'm talking about? Now, can you give me that scripture from another translation? I would like to engage it with softer tunes. Maybe it will flow more easily into your heart. What is ESV? English Standard Version. You are witnesses and God also how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct towards you believers. So the emphasis here is conduct. Another translation will, will, will help us. You saw with your own eyes how discreet and cautious we were among you with keen sensitivity to you to follow believers and God knows we weren't freeloaders. I don't want any big word. We have one word there, freeloaders. This is quite confusing. So give us something that is... Um, you are witnesses, and so is God, how devoutly and uprightly and blamelessly we behaved towards you believers. So we need to pick, there are three words we need to pick. One is, no, go to another, another verse, another translation. You yourselves are witness, and so is God, that we were devout and honest and faultless toward all you believers. Now, in the body of Christ, the first category of ministry that is available is the deacons, diaconate. That's what the Greek calls it. And the deacons are into administrative services. Um, the other services that support the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. So every other service in church life, in the house of God, that supports the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word is categorized to be in that category. Are you there? Then, when you begin to grow in God, that you get to a point where you are flawless. Listen to me. What did I say? Flawless in character. That's when you become an elder. The reason why the requirement for eldership is being flawless in character is because you begin to oversee human beings in their spiritual work with God. If you are not yet matured, you are likely to tune to the flesh and to take advantage of the people that you are overseeing. Are you there? Then you begin to notice that one of the sisters is very beautiful and you take her number for night chatting. You are no longer over, you are overseeing, you are overseeing ministry as, the channel has changed. So it is when you become faultless in character, faultless, blameless in character, that you become an elder. And the job of an elder is spiritual oversight over people. So you don't become an elder quickly. In fact, the, 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 the regulation is that you must have at least 10 years of con consistent character 
If Christ is growing on your inside, there are a few symptoms that will reveal that indeed he's growing. His influence in your heart is growing. First is that you start becoming selfless. Start thinking of other people much more than yourself. It means Christ is. Second thing is that you become generous. The one you have is not enough for you, but you are willing to part with it if it will serve the needs of another person. That's a proof that Christ in you is what? So we, we will need to observe that development in your life. That you grew through the ranks and came to a point where indeed what will be your joy is not about your own personal advancement, but about the advancement of other people in the body of Christ. It, that's when you'll be qualified to become an elder. You will notice in the Bible that the people that were called elders, they were called elders not by anointing investments, but by character investments. An anointed man that has not yet grown into eldership to become flawless in character is a danger to the world. It can take you like three, four years to have the anointing, have power. If you are fasting and praying consistently, most of you have power. I know, I know, I know what you do. I know how you cast out devils. I've heard of your stories. Most of, but you see, that's not a sign that you are matured. All of us should move in power. All of us. Those of you that have been following our prayer meetings, are not, I know, I know you see visions. I, am not, I don't doubt that. I know those are natural things that happen when you begin to explore the spirit realm. Visions will come to you. You can conduct deliverance for people. People can get healed when you minister and all of that. So that should happen to every one of us. But what shows that you are matured is not that you can heal the sick. What shows that you are matured is that we see the traits of a life that Christ has so lavishly expanded his territory upon, such a man will become flawless in character. He sees opportunity to commit immorality. He will not, he, he will not exploit it because Christ in him has made him selfless. He doesn't want to gain from his interaction with this sister. The sister is vulnerable. The sister trusts him. The sister self is even lusting after him. He is aware of that. But he will not exploit that because the nature of Christ in him has so grown and made him to be selfless. So he's not a danger to anybody. Either married or widowed or single lady, he's not a danger to them because the, the empire of Christ has grown to the point where he has become flawless in character. Today we have boys with microphones. People that have not been weaned from milk. People that have not been tried, tested with money. People that fall because of the scent of dollars. And now champion microphone people trying to change Christianity into a one term faith. We have not so learned Christ. As long as I'm alive, my voice is, belongs to Jesus. You know, may, many guys will not like me, but I don't care about that. The empire that Christ has built in my heart is so huge, so large, that I don't consider persons. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. And I don't care if I'm liked. I don't care if I'm disliked. But I know whenever I finish preaching here and I go back home, I say, how did I do? Oh, sometimes Jesus will do like this. <laughs> he lost me with passion. One night he just came to me. The only reason why he came to, to me was that, just to tell me that, you are my man. You are my man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ. So I can tell you in the journey of my discipleship many times that so many people were vulnerable and I did not take advantage of one of them. And I didn't know he was watching for many years. You know, I was not at home for 11 years. My wife was here, I was in Lagos. You know Lagos? You don't know Lagos? <laughs> you know, do you know Lagos? Oh, Jesus Christ. Never for 11 years. So dimensions of authority God will not commit to you. 
Because authority makes you visible. Authority makes you, you appear in the horizon. Woe unto a man that appears in the horizon who has not become flawless in character. It's a disaster waiting for some opportunity to happen. Today, I have disciples among all races. Hallelujah. All races. Male and female alike. I went somewhere in Enugu. So a reverend came to me and said, are you aware that my wife is your disciple? I, I, didn't, I don't know the woman. This woman will never sleep until she hears your message in the night. She's the one that forced me to be your disciple. So we came to submit to tell you in, in the natural that we've been following you for many years. I think reverend in an Anglican church came to tell me. Jesus will never give you that level of publicity if he's not sure of your character. Guess what this guy said? Ye are witnesses, and so is God, how unworthily and just and blameless was our behavior towards you who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Give him my traditional King James back again. Hallelujah. Are you there? Please don't just be anointed. I know all of you are anointed. I know all of you. In the night, I know you see things. If we open a box here now and say, everyone that sees the vision, write it down and put it there. I know every day we'll be receiving full box. I know you people, you see, but you don't stop there. Your life must have a harmony. There must be a beauty that must, that must result from your life. That beauty will come because you decide to to, to live holily, justly, and unblamedly. Unblamedly. So it is not on the account of a wrong character. Someone that wants to hate you will not hate you because you have a bad character. Will hate you because you are a carry out truth. And that truth bites on the fallen nature, on the flesh. And he doesn't want to let go the flesh. That's the reason why they hate you with passion. They pay people money to look for opportunities to castigate you on Facebook. <laughs> you know, it's... it's <laughs> if you know the man you are castigating, his only idol is Jesus Christ. That's your thing you are doing in Facebook. You are wasting your money. In fact, you are even promoting him. You are giving me publicity. There are people that would never have known me, if not that people paid bloggers to look for something. Look, you must find. There must be something to find, to talk about this man. And then they now promoted us to places that we do not have money to advertise ourselves. You can do nothing against the truth. Nothing. So when, you, when people criticize me, it cannot be on the account of wrong conduct. Go to my file when I worked for the government, 16 years. No one offense is in my file for 16 years. I didn't take and I didn't steal for 16 years. You must, I know you are aware that the House of Representatives, they came to screen us, they came to check us. Go and find out. My name is not with EFCC. I didn't steal, I didn't take. I was without a car for seven years by the voice of God. I was in the yellow buses of Lagos. No colleague of mine that was on my rank will ever do that. People saw me as a Jew man. They didn't know how a man under God's discipline looks like. It's because I obeyed today that God has put, I, I don't, I'm not a handsome man, I'm not handsome, but God put my face in front of people every night. It's not because I'm, I'm lanky, six feet two. It has nothing to do with my frame. It has everything to do with the one that is advertised through my vessel. I, I was in, I, I told you I was in Ethiopia. I saw some Muslim ladies that were wrapped up in black, black veils the only part of their body that was on display were, were, were the eyes and one of them called me out of the veil apostle so i said i pretended as if i didn't hear i just i moved one side <laughs> i moved moved quickly moved once and screened my box and everything and was about to escape she escaped alone then she came and stood when she stood she was not Facing me, she stood and faced this side. Me, I was facing the, and we we're talking. She said, Somebody said I should be listening to your message. I said, Hey, are you aware that everything I preach there is true? He said, 
Yes, I found out. That is true. Uh, I found out. I found out. Even people that do not know our Jesus know the sound of God. They know the sound. They know the sound. So I will not change because rascals are around <laughs> that don't know the God of the Bible. Two books in the Pauline epistles dedicated to the description of the sanctified. Don't believe liars. Let's walk in holiness. If we do, all of you, we will stand at the foot of Jesus and he will be proud of us. All of you. All of you. I don't, I don't just think about my life and earthly success that I want to be on uh, this magazine, Charisma. I want to be the prophet of Africa. Ah, that, that, that's not my preoccupation. I stand before him every night contemplating in his presence and thinking on eternity. Because whether you are not aware of it, my great father is no longer here. Huh? That was a man that I would have loved to live forever. I was telling my wife, you miss my father. You missed him. Oh, Jesus. The great mind, you missed him. You would have loved him. But he's no longer here. He's no longer here. So I know that I will not be here forever. So I think on where we go. I think on it. I think on it. Hallelujah. I think on that. Again and again. As we will find out in our study, the second definition of the sanctified life. Uh, no, I will not tell you now. Are you there? So this aspect has to do with our conduct. So there were three verbs here. Holily, justly, and unblamedly. No, you couldn't find any spot. You couldn't find any wrinkle. Check all his documents. They are clean. He doesn't need to lie. Are you there? Some time ago in the office, I don't know what happened. They now brought people from the ministry, from the Civil Service Commission. They brought them to our office and they asked all of us to go and bring our certificates from school living certificate from Wayek, from uh, what they call it, degree certificate, and everything and all day. I, I was wondering what was going on, and the man would just come early. In the <laughs> man would just come early in the morning, insult everybody first, and put you on the edge before the interview. We we start. <laughs> he would insult. <laughs> That was how we joined the line. We were already we were senior, very senior staff. We joined the line. Everybody joined like a refugee. And we carried our, our, our materials. Then one of our managers just got to the man's table. The man, so he su submitted what was supposed to be a certificate for his first degree. The man shouted, thief! <laughs> that is where I finished. This is not how I want <laughs> None of us could look up. All, all of us look like <laughs> the man insulted. The man insulted. The man insulted. How did you get this job? You are doing somebody's job. Uh -huh. Even we that have original ones, we became, <laughs> we became afraid of ourselves. He said, "Stand here, stand here, stand here." That man. Nobody looks at that man. That day he was. He was like this. That's how you. <laughs> That's how you are not bold where you, where, you stay, where you don't walk in holiness. You are not bold. He stood there. We're coming. We're on the line. We're on the line. The man looked at. I don't know whether he had goggles that could tell. The one that was original. He said, okay, this is original. Oh, you are a PhD holder. Oh, doctor. Well done, well done, well done. Here we go. The next one. That day, that day we. <laughs> so my direct manager, that was very, very intelligent. My direct manager came. 
He say your certificate is original, but are you saying that you graduated from secondary school at the age of seven? This is what it is. <laughs> you left secondary school at the age of seven. Is your father the grand the headmaster? <laughs> he says, stand here, stand here. And I was the one after him. He looked at it, then he, he did like this. He said, okay. All right. He did. That was the day I saw how you have no confidence when you are, you have a blame. I choose to be blameless. Jesus wants all of us to be blameless. So that when you stand here, the day we want to wed you, I say, I know this one. I know this one. This is blameless. So every blessing that comes is pronounced that day, it will rest on your life. Hallelujah. Guess what happened after that screening? One of the senior men that was affected and rebuked seriously before us, Guess what happened? He went and brought Shongo. You know Shongo? You are not, you are not following. Because you are not following, we will forget that. <laughs> he went spiritual. <coughs> mm. Sorry for those of you online. You may not know what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that the man went and brought the witch doctor of his village to confuse the entire office so that nobody will remember that his certificate was forged. And when Shongo came, he came on a Sunday. How did they transport Shongo? Because Shongo doesn't enter iron, he doesn't enter vehicles, he doesn't enter plane. Did they disappear like this from the shrine and appear in our, how did they, how did they transport it? Somebody forgot his house key in the office and kept, drove into the office to go and get it from the drawer and saw Shongo in our office. Ah, this is not, this is not Nollywood. <laughs> be blameless. Help me tell your neighbor, be blameless. Oh my God. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. This aspect of sanctification that has to do with our conduct has three subsets. The first subset is what we call the sanctification of our hearts. The second is the sanctification of our bodies. The third is the sanctification that has to do with our spirit. So let us start with the heart. And now that's where I'm going to close for tonight. Then subsequently we'll continue on the journey. Because the vision that God has is to sanctify you wholly, spirit, soul, and body. He wants to sanctify your spirit. He wants to sanctify your soul. He wants to sanctify your body. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 13 is the entry point into sanctification of the heart. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. He establishes our hearts unblameable in holiness. That's where it begins from. So first of all, I need to define what heart is. You know, I told you that I was going to bring my chart, a diagram, so that you can see the hidden and the inward parts as the prophets prophesied. I've not forgotten that. I'll still come up with that diagram and show you how your inward chambers look like and the lens through which we will see the things that are inward is the Word of God. It will help you understand the movements of God when you begin to sense 
his organic vibrations within you, uh, you will be able to understand how to be intimate with him much more if you have that diagram in your mind. Because sanctification must begin from that place. You know, I told you that the problem with fallen humankind was his heart. That everything that was about the fall was wired into his heart. And that the reason why he couldn't live up to the requirements of the laws of God was because his heart was deceitful. His heart was desperately wicked. So even though the laws of God were righteous, he himself had a heart that could not align with the fulfillment of the things that God required. So in the context of the New Testament, what God does is that he gives us a new heart and he gives us a new spirit. So this is the goal. This is what he wants to achieve in your heart. He wants to establish your heart unblameable. It means there are blames that are heart bound. There are errors that are heart bound. And you must know this. You must know this. Physical sin that has to do with the body or sin that has to do with the mind does not just come. It passes through the incubator and the incubator happens to be the heart. And God does not just want sanctification and holiness in our conduct. He wants it in our heart because that's the best place of everything that becomes a manifestation. Are you still with me? All right, so this is the arrangement that God puts in place in order to ensure that uh, we can, our hearts can become unblameable. Hello, thanks for watching. I believe you've been blessed. Please like, share,